News. I'm Shalem Tudagil. And I'm Chief Musha, and we at Reclaiming the Throne Reload. Reload. D28 Productions. Woo! We in the building, y'all. We here. Come on, we in Columbia, life. South Carolina at the Spotlight Cinema. We shut the city down. It's Israelites in here looking royal. We Beautiful. going back to the ancient path. It's Beautiful. excitement everywhere. You need to be here. If you're not here, where are you? Come on down. Spotlight Cinemas, we're here. It's live. It's live. Now, now we want to look at what we got on. Because you know, you know, I tried to do a little something. Listen. Tried to do a little something, let y'all know what inspired me. But I want to first know, Shalem, what inspired you? You did that girl like that purple. What you listen, got going on? Listen, listen here. We have a custom-made robe from Cheyenne Le Vouche. All right, Cheyenne we out here. Cheyenne Le Vouche, okay, French down. You already know. Um, we got some nice, you know, solid up cultural attire. And you know, we just, we just look through. We look great out here, okay? All right, now, so hold what on. I did, we, about, we out here at the ancient paths, you know. Ancient. I had to wear the Mitri to show that priesthood. You know what I'm saying? I had to wear the weather royal. We had to wear that sapphire blue. Y'all don't know what that represents. Y'all don't know about that. We don't know. In Ruach <laughs> one day. <laughs> And we had to represent the lion, the lion of Judah. Yes. All right, but this is what we're talking about, royalty, going back to the ancient path. Us as a people, this is what it means to rediscover who you are. Yes. We're not Negro, we're not black people, we're not African American, but we are the tabernacle of Dahu. We are his children. Yes. We're yes. turning back to who we are as a people, Israelites, back into motion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're here. So 12 tribes were showing out That's right. the most Kodesh royal ancient attire. People have high energy, high vibes. So what are some things that we have here today going on? All right, all right. Number one, if you're hungry, if you're hungry, I'm we got hungry. concession. But um, also, we, we're going to have music performances. You'll hear that in a minute. We got the djembe's going for the ancient sound. You'll hear artists like um, Zamar. Okay. With his album The Wait. You heard yes. artists like Daoud uh, 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 with with his uh, album that he came out of the group, Graffiti Art, Art of Worship. You'll yes. hear the Okote Project. I want you to speak a little bit on how that album, how good that album was. Listen, the Okote Project is such a powerful album. It's not just for the Okotes. Ox, get the album to come show love and We support. ain't too hard. We ain't too hard come for the on. album. Now. I know we Israelites and we strong, but we ain't too come hard on, to. Ox. Shout out to our uh, Akotis. Shout out to our Akotis. It's very powerful, life changing. It's coming through with a lot of self reflection and introspection. And I think that's something that is so important for us in this time, looking at the day and age that we're in. It's so important to get our Ruka, get our healing right, if you know what I mean. That's right. And we also got for the new school, for the younger people, a young man named Mika Yahoo. Got a powerful album Hard. I call The Mind of the Hebrew. Yes. He'll be here performing. If you like, if back in the day you used to listen to Twister and you like fast rap, we got one representing on the Hebrew side. His name is Michelle Lee, and this album is called Sapphire. So we got all the artists that's going to be here. We also, at a certain time, we have all the theaters to rent it out. Every theater has Reclaiming the Throne, and we're going to start the movie at a certain time with all our people be able to go in and watch the first two hours of Reclaiming the Throne. You'll see the first episode. But if you want to see all three of them, what you need to do is go to Tubi TV. You can go to Tubi TV and see it for free. All right. They're going to have commercials on it, and every time you watch it, we're getting paid. Praise Yahushua. So keep watching it. Keep watching. Keep supporting. Go watch it right now. Can we watch it somewhere else too? You can watch it somewhere else. You can also watch it on Vimeo. You can purchase all three of them on Vimeo. Yes, it's also yes, yes. on Amazon. So go get check it, it out go, on Amazon. It, go, I know episode it. one is on Amazon, two and three is coming in the future. So we are excited about so what we're excited. doing. This is an epic event. I wish they could turn the cameras around and let you see what's <laughs> going on. Now you got us as red carpet, looking beautiful. Beautiful. Walking, taking pictures. Elegant. Remember, this ain't Black Panther. No. This ain't a Black Panther premiere. It's about who our history is and we as a people returning yes. and we yes. are reclaiming yes. our throne. throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. D28 Productions uh, put this on. Now, 
the importance of D28 production is for us to be able to reclaim our imagery when it comes to who we are as a people. So now we are able to take back control of our film, our art, our comedy, our entertainment, and give it the right perspective so people can know that we are not just heathens, we're not people that's out of control, we're not people that just drink and smoke and cuss and have sex. No, we are royal people and people of nobility. D28 is bringing that back on the scene, Productions. What do you think about that? It's so excellent to me because recently in this past month of February, there was a so-called Black History Month. Right, right. But I actually did see D28 Productions going hard on, continually man. with 28 days of reclaiming the throne. That's right. And with that, I just saw so many creative right. Hebrew people inspiring our culture, our family, and waking people up to who waking they truly are. Now, right. I saw different TikToks, Instagrams, and Reels like that. But there were so many clips of the movie that I was exposed to, Hallelujah. which truly changed my perspective of who I actually am. You know, Hallelujah. you some people just think it's like a, a, a religion, a, right. a, a, just something to wear. But this is this is so much deeper. Who than we that. are. That's it's right. literally who it's we are. It's in our genetic code. It's in our DNA. So it's important for you to understand and understand your heritage and return back. And this is one of the first epic events that we're doing that not only are we premiering it, but we reloading it, putting it back into the atmosphere and taking it all over the world, even in remote cities and remote towns. We will be traveling with this. So for traveling? people, yeah, we're gonna be, we gonna be moving. We're gonna be traveling. We might end up at your city. What's going on? So you want to go and subscribe to all our social media on Facebook, okay. on Twitter. Twitter. Oh, what's some of the other ones? We got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got Instagram, we Instagram. got TikTok. Come on, I like to call it Instacart. Not Instacart, hold up. <laughs> we ain't no bringing no groceries back on. <laughs> Not no groceries. We're reclaiming the throne. <laughs> don't don't, don't put in Instacart, reclaiming the throne. They ain't going to bring you nothing. The movie won't come that way. Holy Instagram. God. Instagram, <laughs> like you said, the Amazon Vimeo Tubi. We're out here. We're ready for the support. We're ready to hear what you guys think about this movie. How has it changed your life? How has it impacted your views, your perspectives? Like, I'm just so excited to see what the people have to say. Uh, me too, me too. And the minute you're going to see the different leaderships are, um, around that's supporting D28. Um, they're going to come in and they're going to do interviews. But one of the greatest things that we're going to do today is the actual producers of Reclaiming the Throne is wow. in the building. This is crazy. We have one of the greatest uh, historians, two of the greatest historians I believe that's on the earth, Chief uh, Yahusha, Joshua Cullens, and Benaya Israel. They'll be here to answer questions. Yours truly, that was part of the documentary, wow. as one of the producers, we're going to have a question and answer. You'll be able to sit down and talk with us and uh, 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 ask us questions and pick our mind about what we think and what's going on in the earth and what's going to happen Powerful. in the next film. Because Powerful. if you think Reclaiming the Throne 1 was something, wait till yeah. Reclaiming the Throne 2. Now, listen. It's going to be something that shakes the imagine. foundation of the earth that you ain't never seen done ever and i also heard let me know if i'm um, wrong or not but that during this q a session some people may be able to put some input in yes. for reclaiming the throne too right we're going to allow people to be able to bring up different things that they might want to see and reclaiming the throne too and getting information on so you will be a part of the production oh of what me uh chief oh yahusha joshua cullens and benaya israel is establishing we're allowing you to lock arms with us this and be awesome. a part of what we're doing truly monumental truly life-changing and you don't want to miss it subscribe across all platforms that's right and 
be prepared to have a renewed and changed mind, a renewed right. perspective of who you are as a person. That is what we're out here trying to do. That's what we're doing. And and also to keep up with us, EX News. EX News is going to be to the forefront. You'll be getting a lot of the things that will be coming forward, what's going to happen, what city that we're going to be in. All these things will be happening so you can uh, keep along and follow what we're doing. So can stay tuned. Go and subscribe again to every social media that we have. Let's name some of the social medias one more time. Once again, we're on Instagram. Instagram. We're on Facebook. Facebook. We're on Twitter. Twitter. We're on TikTok. That's right. Now again, it's D28 Productions. And um, the hashtags and the mentions, and there are different variations, but make sure you look us up. We are here. We're open. And if you look up hashtag reclaiming the throne, hashtag reclaiming your history, you will definitely find us because we took over the internet. I'm we sorry. We took over. We took it over. Got That's it just what it is. Got it on lockdown, baby. We not. <laughs> it's ours not. We Everything not ours. Up. We bringing it all back because it's time for us to reclaim, reclaim our throne. Our Throne. That's it is right. what it is. So we're so excited once again for this amazing, amazing event. And I, I want to know, those that are watching, can you hear that sound? What that sound like? That sound like redemption. That sound like freedom. You need to be here. You hear? Hey. 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 That sound like somebody that they reclaimed the throne. Reclaiming Coming home. again to a city near you. Stay focused. I hope you hear the sound of redemption, yes. the sound of freedom. This is a foreshadow of what it's going to be like. When you hold all the promises of the scriptures, is manifested back to the people. Hallelujah. And our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, Hallelujah. when he returns and brings us back into the land, mm. this is the sound you're going to hear. Hallelujah. This is the rejoicing you're going to hear. Come so, on. this is a foreshadow of that. So, you need to be here. Because when be he here. sat on the throne, he's going to rule and he's going to subdue all nations. And he's going to reign into the ends of the earth. So hallelujah, we love y'all again, EX News, Chief Musha and Shalem to that gil, y'all, we love you so much. We host it until the next time we see you. Love you until the next session. Shalom. Shalom.
guys, my name is Talia. And I'm Zabia. And this is EX News with D28 Productions. Tonight we are here for the premiere of Reclaiming the Throne. Woo! Yes, honey. The groundbreaking docuseries. When I say groundbreaking, yes, ma'am. <laughs> shook the table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's such an amazing um, opportunity to be here tonight. Yes. Um, the opportunity to see our people coming back to the knowledge of who we truly are, are yes. actually just learning. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. So tonight we actually have the opportunity and the honor to interview two amazing women, um, yes. Mara Tushia as well as Mara Para. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Shalom. Oh, yeah. Honor to you both. Yes, honor. Y'all so beautiful. Yes, y'all look great. Y'all yes. look great. Yes, okay. Yes. I'm going to come out here and stunt. Okay. Yes. How do y'all feel being here tonight? I feel great. Um, I just, I'm just so excited to see how many people have come out, how many people have come out clean. Yes. And um, how we just come out and show out and just be able to enjoy Yahuwah and actually represent him well. So it's just really warming my heart to see how many people have come and even those who we don't even know. So I'm just excited to see that and, and I'm excited to see how we're going to move from this place. I just land back what she said. Um, it's always great to see our people come together and be in shalom, right? So ain't nobody arguing. We not cursing, listening to booty shaking music, all that stuff, right? We in here and we having a great time and everybody looks like the people that we are, real royal people, right? So everybody's dressed up really nice. So it's a great thing to see. Yes. Yes, it is such a beautiful blessing to see us um, come back to the nobility that was um, initially given to us. Um, as we know, we were stripped from that knowledge of who we are as a people. Um, this docu-series, which is why it's so groundbreaking, because it breaks up the foundation of what we were taught here. Um, how has this movie impacted your life and changed it for the better? I'll say that it's impacted my life by giving me um, clear understanding of the history of where we were from and who we are. It gives foolproof and evidence of who we are. You know what I mean? Like, it shows you that you are from Dao, and it shows you how we got here. It shows you the track that we came to get here, and it also proves the fact that we are royalty, just like you just said. And so, for me, it's given me that foundation, a stronger foundation from from just knowing that we are the people, it shows how we are the people. Right. Um, I feel like it's impacted us because um, my husband and I, we have two younger children. Um, we have a five-year-old and a, a six-year-old. He'll be seven in April. And um, for us, it's very important for them to be able to relate to people that look like them. Hallelujah. And so knowing that we are the chosen people and we're the ones that is that it talks about in the Bible, that's something that we can give and share to them and we don't have to depend on them to look forward to the white Caesar Borgoria or whatever his name is. So um, it's, it's a great thing for us to be able to share and actually pour into our children what was not able to be poured into us. And so first generation, they'll be the second generation and then they look forward to you know, getting married later in the years and being able to share it with their children. So just to be able to relate to it. That's beautiful. Thank y'all so much for that. Hallelujah. Yes, that is great. Um, I'm so happy to hear that your children are learning about this and being able to receive this knowledge and just be able to be duplicated into something new, something that we haven't been able to be before this time. Um, it's such an honor and a privilege to have you both here today. Yes, thank y'all so much. As we know, this is the premiere for it, but I know that you watched it um, initially. Um, what changed for you majorly? Like the most prominent thing, I believe, that changed your view um, after watching this? The most prominent thing that changed my view? Um, of yourself, shall I say. Of myself? Yes, oh, well, I actually like the part where um, our, our mother
mother Malaka mm -hmm. and our more Yiska was going through explaining the different vari variations about women mm -hmm. and how we used to dress and the culture of women and how um, it's so different, so vastly different from what we've been taught in America. It shows us how royal we are supposed to be and how we are su how supposed to carry ourselves. And it actually shows in the scriptures, um, it, it explains from the scriptures where we actually ended up on the on the other end of the curse. You know what I mean? Like, those are the things that we've been taught from a little girl on up. Like, you know, get out here like my sister was saying, listen to booty shaking music and all these different things that really degraded us from where we were supposed to be. So it really, it really truly gives us a, a, a point of identity as a woman. And, and so a lot of times, you know, women can be degraded, but also we degrade ourselves. And so just being able to understand where we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to carry ourselves, it really gave me um, a clear understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing and showing my children, my daughter, my granddaughter. So that's my answer for that. Right. Um, and for me, I would just say, she took my answer, but I was going to say um, <laughs> the part with, um, with Gabira Malaka as well as um, Mariska because it just it opened the door and shared more information into what our ancestors actually did and how they dressed. Um, and I'm, I always make a point of saying, you know how like in some churches they say, oh, well, you shouldn't wear jewelry and you shouldn't do this, but that's what our ancestors did. And that was a part, you know, sometimes it showed what tribe they were a part of or their wealth or um, different things that they would have. And so for me, seeing that, um, I thought that that was very important to be able to share because I want my daughter to be you know, I want her to be girly and enjoy jewelry and everything. And I don't want her to feel like that's something that she can't wear because a man told her, a man told her that she can't wear that. And so, um, so I appreciate that, that part um, of the documentary and just being able to, being able to see what Ashet Kayel looks like, being able to see the Titus II in person and being able to actually have that example in front of you that you can go to and talk to and get pure wisdom from and not like, oh, I'm the independent woman and I'm going to do what I want to do. Right. No, that's not the way that it's set up to be. So um, I definitely appreciate that part um, and all of the mothers that we have. Hallelujah, that is great. Okay, so one thing just before you guys leave, what is one thing that you feel like you took from this documentary that you would want, if they never watched this documentary, maybe they won't watch it, maybe they will. Hopefully they will because it's life changing. What is one thing that you want them to remember from seeing this? Um, I would say the one thing that I would want people to remember um, and to learn as far as the documentary goes is that we are royal people. Um, we are the chosen people, and we don't have to, you know, be, in, be thugs and independent women and, you know, all the stuff showing our body. Our bodies are our temples, right? And so that's supposed to be secured and held in for the one that, the one that's been or has been chosen for us. And so um, one thing that I would say I want people to remember is that we are a chosen people, and we're royal. So what I would want people to remember just by watching the movie, um, I would say the complete series, is the torture and the pain that our, our family went through. The bloodshed, the rapes, you know, the, the tearing children away from their parents, and um, all the different atrocities that we went through. The proof that is shown in the movie and not turn a, a blind eye to the things that are being shown in the movie, but actually embrace that hurt, that pain, and, and make a choice to move past it with understanding of who we are, but not just understanding who we are, but how do we move from here? We're not supposed to just stay in the same place that we have been in. We're not supposed to just continue to turn our eye and just say, you know, okay, yeah, we know they went through that and all those things like that. But we are to move. We are to know who we are. We are to rise to who we are. And we are to become that royal priesthood that Yahuwah has called us to be. So that's what I would want people to remember is, is not just cookies and cream. It was very heart-wrenching heart and very painful and very torturous to our family. And our bloodshed, the bloodshed of our family members are in, are in the, uh, the rows of corn that we now still eat. So I just want everybody to remember that 
and make a choice. Make a choice to respond correctly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, that is that is very important and for us to make a choice. I'm really glad that you said that. Let's watch that movie and make a choice. Be different. Let's not be the same. Okay, y'all. We we're not trying to be the same out here no more. <laughs> we have to reclaim the throne, reclaim our seed, reclaim our history so we can move forward in the power that is to be given to us from the yes. one that is on the throne. But we thank you, yes, beautiful thank women, you. so much, and we give you honors. Probably and we are. thank y'all for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that you've given unto us on this night. So thank y'all so much. I pray you have a good rest of your evening. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank y'all. Welcome. Welcome. How y'all doing? Welcome. How y'all doing both. today? It's nice to have y'all with us. Yes. I, we see y'all looking fits. clean out here. Y'all fresh. Y'all fresh. We see them. It's okay. <laughs> Look, y'all, we all heard red carpet. You can't <laughs> step in. Okay. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit, you know. <laughs> but thank y'all so much for joining us. We appreciate you guys um, being here with us <laughs> on this night. So um, as we know, we are here to um, watch the premiere of the groundbreaking docu-series, Reclaiming the Throne. Um, we know that in this docu-series, it's a lot of information, a lot of groundbreaking information that will change your, the view of many things that you see, um, many of the lies being basically untold and uncovered with the truth. Um, as to what America will call black men, how has this movie changed the view about yourself after watching it? So I would say being young and being a black man, um, I realized that we are very, very miseducated as a people. And getting what we've been provided by D28 Productions from Reclaiming the, Song, Reclaiming the Throne docuseries is very empowering being a young black man in America, being able to know that I don't just descend from thugs, gang bangers, and people that's doing the wrong things in our communities, but actually saying that I descend from a kingship. I, de I descend from nobility. So for me, that's one thing that I feel like has really helped change my perception and who I am as a person. Yeah, well, this documentary has been powerful for me because at the end of the day, you know, we, like he said, we got a perception already about ourselves out there. So to me, it gave me a more a surety of who I am, you know, in the Most High, but also it gave me the understanding of the royal, the royalty that, that I come from, you know what I mean, that's in my blood, so I definitely feel like this gave me more foundation, you know, and where I'm trying to go, so it was powerful, it was powerful. Hallelujah. And so both of you um, being black men, as they say in America, how is that affecting how you are changing, um, raising your sons and um, being a husband to your wives? How is that changing and elevating you? Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, well, I don't have yellow, I don't have children oh, yet. Okay. Yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> but for the most part, what I can say to that is um, we grew up off lives. So that's all we know. That's all we that's all we are comfortable with so truth is very uncomfortable for us it burns so I feel like with our children in this next generation truth is going to be normal to them so it's not going to sting lies it's not going it's, it's really going to be like that's not true because we understand who we are we understand where we come from and we understand our purpose so that's what I feel like man. for me I got two sons, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm planning on building more, but uh, Barack your hood for that. But I will say for me, looking back, looking at what Reclaiming the Throne has provided to us has definitely set a standard and has raised the bar because I know I can't raise my sons like any old other father out there. I have to give them a standard. Like I said at first, like giving them a standard of nobility where they know how to think when they go into the world, know how to understand where they can even be able to perceive how broken their people are and not be drugged into the broken um, narratives that's pushed in the media. So um, I think this this and what it's provided for me has definitely been seed planting it and I got to duplicate it. I have to. Praise Yahuwah for the duplication. Praise Yahuwah for planting seeds of truth in both of you um, young men that you can go forth in power and pouring into your sons so we can raise that generation in light rather than the darkness 
that um, this country has tried to breathe them in. But um, we thank y'all for joining us today with EX News and D28 Productions um, as we are here in Columbia, South Carolina, Reclaiming the Throne premiere. We appreciate y'all. Thank you, Todoraba, and honors unto you both. Thank you. So let, let somebody say new way. Let me hear you say new way. So now we got the artist from the new school. From the new school.
enemies, that's a heck of a sentence, and I can't blame you. Hallelujah. 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 here in Columbia, South Carolina for the D28 Productions premiere of Reclaiming the Throne. <laughs> so we are here with beautiful people in a beautiful venue learning about our true history, not his story. <laughs> And we are blessed with the ability to interview two amazing people, uh, Maurice Sariahu as well as Mara Hana. Yay! Oh, welcome, welcome. Hello. Honest Hello. unto you both. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. How you doing? All right, thank you. Y'all look amazing. Yes, y'all look yes. beautiful, beautiful. We love the matching ensemble here. Yes. yes. I like the I like the shoes, Moray. They fresh. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie now. <laughs> 
So how is y'all's night going? Are y'all enjoying yourselves? Is everything going how you expected it to go? Above your expectations? Yes, well above my expectations. I'm so happy to see the turnout. So happy to see my brothers and my sisters um, diff meeting different people, listening to the music, the different artists, just um, reclaiming our throne. Praise you, Husha. Hallelujah. Praise you. Um, yeah, it's actually exciting. Um, to see a platform like this for our people. Um, I especially want to give an esteem to the leaders and the creators of this. Uh, our Moray Mo, AKA Morris, Moray uh, Yahua, Yahusha, AKA Josh Cullens. Very great turnout, beautiful ensemble. Uh, you, can't, you can't even imagine, words can't put it in the full description though. Hallelujah. Yes. I completely agree. Yes, praise him. Hallelujah. So um, I know that this movie is actually beautiful, 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 beautiful. It's life-changing. Yes. As yes. we have heard so many people say tonight that it's life-changing. Yes. How do you guys feel like this movie has impacted you all? Uh, I know for me, um, it's had a profound effect because it was something that um, I had started because I met them before the movie came out. So to actually see everything transpire based off of the things that we had uh, built on and learned about, actually doing my own DNA test and everything, and then finding out, even doing an in, even more in-depth study with uh, Moray Benaya, and finding out my family didn't even go to the west coast of Africa. They came straight from Spain and Portugal to the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So to see those DNA things line out and then see how the scriptures add in and play it all together and to see it all come out and play on the film it's something that you just gotta slowly digest because if you try to overdo it you ain't gonna be able to stay in the phase but to un but to really take it in and go through with it man that's it's beautiful to see it on film so yeah and for me, it's been through, um, especially for my daughters. My daughters are learning a lot through this, um, through the movie, through watching the movie, um, and just learning how to be modest and chase daughters. Um, my daughter makes bracelets, and so um, she learned what it is to wear jewelry, why you're wearing jewelry, the culture behind the jewelry from the movie. And so it's been a very through experience in watching this with them um, so that they can learn and teach their daughters or their sons, you know, going forward. So praise you, Husha. That's such a blessing that um, your daughters have learned the significance behind a lot of the history of our people. Um, I'm thankful for this documentary that that has impacted you guys in such a way. Um, one question that I did want to ask, are there any specific steps that you guys have taken or changed in your life um, after watching the Reclaim the Throne documentary? Yes, yeah, so for me, um, it changed like the way, like my dressing and my attire. Um, I no longer, you know, when I went to college, short skirts, partying. Yeah, I threw all that stuff away. Um, and now teaching my daughters, you know, how to dress modestly, you know, um, and jewelry and, um, you know, the jewelry that they put on and, um, you know, their head wraps and why you're having your head wrapped and the culture of just being who you are, who Yahuwah created you to be, and just know how to love yourself through Adonai Yahusha. So the movie is very life-changing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, for me, I, I agree. Um, to see the profound effect that it's had on my whole family. Um, as, you know, for me, I started off first, and then as my family got in, and then once the movie, and I can see the evolve in all of us, because it's affected me to, like, where I'm even more comfortable in my Hebrew attire. You know, I'm not looking or standing out. I'm not looking like I got to wait to when I'm going to put it on to where people gonna ask questions, but man, my now my family, heck, my wife and my daughters head wrap going to the grocery store. So it's had a, but it's like, it's become our nature now. It's not something that we trying to perform or trying to ease ourselves in, but now we have embraced it to the point that this is our nature, this is who we are. And it's beautiful when you see us as a unit do it together and not separately, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, yes, that is beautiful. Praise Yahuwah for y'all just being able to be restored, um, go back to your modest attire, and just be able to be comfortable in it. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing because... We know our, a lot of our men are sagging their pants and yes. girls wearing high skirts, like you said. And so it's a, a beautiful thing to see um, us going back to our culture and returning and um, just changing our lifestyles, our mindsets, how we think about ourselves and knowing that there is beauty and modesty. Yes. Um, so praise Yahuwah for that. We are so thankful that you guys came here yes, tonight and that you were able it. to enjoy yourselves. Yes. And praise Yahusha just for coming out. Thank yeah, you. No, I'm still not going to do them tight pants, though. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yes. So y'all can forget that. Yeah. I'm going to keep it baggy, all right? Yeah. Love y'all, though. Appreciate right. y'all. Love y'all, too. Thank you Love so you. much. Shalom. 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 How y'all doing? Shalom. Shalom. All yes. honest unto you both. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. Yes. Happy, Happy to be here. here. Thank you for having us. Yes. So how y'all feeling? Like, are y'all enjoying the event so far? Yes. It's been a beautiful time. Just um, being able to see everyone, new faces, uh, new, new people, meet new people, as well as people that I see all the time on a daily basis. And I just love watching everybody just dress up in cultural attire and stuff like that. So it's been uh, an amazing, amazing evening. Listen, same here. Um, it's amazing. Uh, event is beautiful uh, seeing everybody you know wearing their, their culture garments and 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 having the knowledge of where it comes from what it means the purpose behind it man it's just beautiful you know speaking about the cultural attire y'all look amazing yes yeah, beautiful beautiful beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I'm not custom like everybody else but I did a little something something today. <laughs> I love your belt it's beautiful um, yeah for Ada a uh, little sister from Augusta made the custom belt. Got some royal blue for sapphire and black. Love it, love it, love it. It goes with everything. Pretty everything. Cool. Everything. I love, we love multi-functional things. You got to function in every capacity. Listen, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about your coat, Maureen? Absolutely. So it's another sister from Augusta, Nanye and um, Ari Shiloh. This is they, they make these, these mm. garments and so, man, they're beautiful. Yeah, this is custom made. Hallelujah. So, yeah. Ooh, custom. We fancy all here. I, I love it. I love it. Yes. Hallelujah. So seeing that we're talking about your beautiful attire, we also know that you two are beautiful people who make beautiful art, um, um, images, and also just musical as well. And so being that you guys are both artists, how has watching the Reclaiming the Throne docuseries changed your artistry? Hmm, man, that's... That's a loaded question. Um, it changed it a lot because, uh, well, first, let me just say the um, impactful thing for me watching the film, it's, it's a lot of things. It's exposing hidden history, you know. Um, it's literally unveiling a, a, a hidden lost chapter within our, our history as, as a people, um, who the world called black people. You know, um, growing up, we always thought that Europeans came to Africa, you know, random places in Africa and just picked up, you know, a bunch of slaves, but that's not the, the case. As a matter of fact, the majority of um, African Americans here, our ancestors didn't even touch the land of Africa. That's one of the things that I learned from, the, um, from watching the, the, the documentary. And um, a lot of them came from, you know, Spain. And so that's what um, really st stuck out to me. But aside of that, um, I would say the film changed my artistic perspective because it gave me a sense of ownership of biblical stories. Um, I don't want to say biblical characters because, you know, those are our ancestors, but, you know, those um, biblical figures um, in our um, history, you know, it, it gives me a, a sense of ownership. And so when I am illustrating them, um, I don't know, I, I, I feel like I'm drawing like my grandparents or great-grandparents, you know, so hallelujah. That's amazing, like a greater respect a for great, the people respect. that, that Absolutely. you're depicting. Absolutely. That's a Absolutely. blessing, yes. How about you? Um, um, I would say it gave me purpose. Um, before, when I was writing and creating, I was always pulling from trauma mm -hmm. or things that I may have not personally experienced or like somebody told me about. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to write about that. But... Um, 
and I've always been the type that kind of like searching for culture, searching for history and understanding who we are. And so when I learned about who we are as a people, I learned about the um, the the docu series and everything that was in it it just gave me a greater sense of purpose when creating so the music i create now i, f- I feel like there is it's a purpose behind it instead of me just like coming up with a random topic and then sitting and listening to a whole bunch of random beats but it gives me like okay if I'm coming up with this, I want to I want to talk about a particular story of one of our forefathers or foremothers, and then I'll start to create a beat. I start to create like a soundscape to go with that. Then I'll start creating like the the um the and the the voice and and character and things that I want to portray in the actual song. So and when you listen to it, it's not about like oh, I'm just making something up that I haven't experienced or, oh, I'm just making something up out of thin air, but it's actually coming from something, a book, the Bible, our history book. So it's just like, it's not me like thinking of something random. It's Yahuwah, the Most High, giving it to me and me just creating from that. So I feel like it's a greater sense of purpose that I have now when creating. So I praise Yahusha for it. Hallelujah. Um, That is such a blessing because I know as a people, we are an artistic people we are heavily influenced by art and music so it's such a blessing to see that you guys put so much thought and heart and effort and purpose into your art so you can influence the next generation makes y'all so beautiful yes but total bye for joining us tonight Hallelujah. Yes, thank you guys for joining us. Y'all look beautiful. I pray y'all continue to enjoy the night and y'all just feel great and leave this um, feeling life changing another way today. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. thank y'all. All. Welcome, Musha. How you doing? Shalom. Uh, honors. Honors, honors to you. Yes. Hallelujah. So it's a beautiful ex- event happening tonight. We had a beautiful red carpet, beautiful attire, beautiful movie to see. Um, how has your experience been tonight? It has been amazing. Um, just seeing everybody literally reclaiming their history, reclaiming their culture, reclaiming their throne. I had to throw that in there. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Yes, look, we all out here trying to reclaim the throne, reclaim our mind, reclaim our history. <laughs> but um, as we do know that you are from um, Oklahoma City, OKC, and I know that um, many of us growing up have learned about the Tulsa riots. You even got to speak about the Tulsa riots in the film. Um, so how did that impact your life, being able to expound on such a historical event for our people? Man, um... It was really amazing in a lot of different ways. Growing up there and seeing it, it's, it's different when it's common knowledge to you. Mm-hmm. So everyone kind of understands, hey, this took place, so it's just the norm. But then, man, uh, so to be, you know, 40 years later, 45, however old I was when they shot it, and I had w- woken up and understand, man, this is literally an impact of the curses. And um, so it was tangible for me because I grew up in it to even see just the small details of um, when they wanted to do something bigger and um, our community wanted to do another thing. They said, well, we'll just take our money over here and do the thing we want to do anyway. So it's almost like you can consistently see those curses continue to follow us. So um, another impactful way was to really have an opportunity to know the producers and know the D2018 to where I could tangibly like research and study and say, man, this is really what happened from an insider point of view or a local's point of view. And um, just given even more information that may not have been able to be brought out if you just studied it versus having a living uh, reality attachment to it. Yes. Thank you so much for your contribution. It was really appreciated. I'm sure it's going to um, definitely impact our community in such a beneficial and positive way. Um, Many of us don't know the exponential information that you did share, so we do appreciate that, um, those facts. Um, We thank you for joining us tonight, Mushal Ro, and we appreciate you for spending some time with us and giving us some um, information. So we appreciate you. Hallelujah. Now we got another new way for the new way. And again, new way. We got another young man called Zamar Yara.
are live here, EX News. My name is Shalem Tudagil. I'm Zion. And today we are at the Reclaiming the Throne Reload. So today we have a special interview for you guys. Very special, very yes. special. We're so excited to introduce our next guest here with us. Moria Shock. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. welcome, welcome. How are you doing? So, <laughs> Maria Shag, it is such a pleasure to have you here on EX News. Can you just tell us a little background about who you are, where you're from, and how you had such a huge impact on the Reclaiming the Throne movie? Um, so, my name is Yashag, Hebrew name, government name, Angelo, hallelujah. <laughs> country boy, um, you know, born down in the country, way down in there, probably ain't even on the map, hallelujah. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> but um, you know, Yahuwah just woke us up, uh, woke me up, me and my, uh, my wife and I, maybe in like 2013, 2014. Okay. And, you know, we've just been growing since then. And so uh, when it came to reclaiming the throne, yeah. round about that time, and Maury Musha and Maury Yahusha didn't even know that I was actually doing a series. Oh, wow. Talking, um, and, the, and it was Memory Restored. Oh, wow. And the last segment that I was doing was about DNA. And we trace it from a DNA perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's what you brought to Reclaiming oh. the Throne. So tell us a little bit about that, you talking about DNA and your research and study on DNA. So um, basically looking at the evidence, you know, of course we have historian accounts. Of course we have historian accounts. We have um, theologian, you know, uh, accreditations and everything. So what I looked at was, okay, there has to be a way to trace who we are outside of historian accounts because a lot of times what happens is we even when you're dealing with history every historian has a bias every theologian has a bias and, and you know we only go to them just to extract certain information but we don't glean from everything that they're saying so you know they can lie that's true that's one true. thing that can't lie is dna can't lie you know with um, that. right dna can't lie and so what we did was what I went, I said, okay, is there any way that we can trace who we are just wow. through DNA? So then that took me on a journey looking at our haplogroup, because that's one of the things okay. that I mentioned, which is E1B1A. E1B, okay. Right, and that is the majority of uh, the so-called African American, and that matches the Hebrew community in West Africa, wow. Central Africa, East Africa, even in mm. South Africa. Um, and so when you study, well, when I studied, I looked at oral traditions. I looked at what they said about themselves, what their enemy said about them. And I looked at migration routes. Wow. And all of it matched and lined up. So, um, and that's where I got to where I am now. Wow, that that is so, so, so powerful. And it's crazy because many people just say, you know, don't get into genealogies, right. bloodline, DNA, right. all those things don't matter, but we see the DNA proves it helps with our existence and who right. we are as the people of Israel. Right. Now, in regards to reclaiming the throne, what is one thing that you must say is important for people who have never seen the movie before or don't know anything about our Israelite culture to know? What is something that you would like to share with them? Um, so, I would say when you look at it, look at it with an open mind. Okay. Don't, because a lot of times when we already go into things because we have terrible representation. Mm. And so there's already red herrings that set up so that when people hear Hebrew Israelite and they hear those things, they automatically want to shut the door. That's right. true. So listen with an open mind and you owe it to yourself to hear the information yeah. and prove those things just to see, is there any validation to this? Yes, and of course, you know, the things that was brought out we got credible sources that people would deem credible because I'm sure all of us know if we say certain things, I don't know. But if they tell you and right. you pull it from them, right. then it's like, okay, well, maybe there is some truth to this. Yes, sir. So I would say when you look at this, look at it with an open mind. Don't put a mind block there. Look at it with an open mind and receive the information and go back and take it and do your own research with it. So how do you think this documentary is going to and has already impacted the world? Well, let me tell you like this. 
<laughs> this by far is the best docu-series I have ever seen. Hands down. I ain't just saying that because I meant it. I'm saying it because <laughs> it's true. You can easily follow this. Easily follow. And it has reached a lot of places. Yes. It, this movie has reached people that we couldn't reach. This is amazing. Yeah. So. It's so powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much you. for your time. And thank you for everything that you have done with D28 Productions and Reclaiming the Throne, Moria Shog. We wish you well here at EX News. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank Shalem, are you ready for this next guest that we have? Who we got? Who we got? I, I don't know. Are you ready, though? I don't okay, know. It's a I'm flyer ready, couple I'm out ready, here. That's I'm what ready. I heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> All right. So it? next we have Shah and Maluan Yahoo. All right. Come on in, y'all. Welcome, welcome to EX News. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you Beautiful. guys doing today? Awesome. Loving, loving, loving this whole environment, this whole scene. So. Y'all look lovely, lovely, royal, ancient in Kodesh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I have a question for you all. As people that have watched this amazing documentary series, what was your first impression? What were you thinking when you initially saw this? Honestly, um, the graphics, because mm. it keeps you engaged. So like typically when you watch documentaries, sometimes they can be like so much information packed that huh. it's hard to stay focused. Right. And so the graphics, the content, um, you know, the way that it's overall presented, I would say is my favorite because the way that he did it was so strategic to keep you engaged. And so I think that would, when you're trying to reach people who don't yet know Yahuwah right. or aren't in the truth, you need to, to grab them. You need to, like, yes. get their attention. Right. Like, you need to give them something to, like, well, yes, draw them in, want to keep them keep them watching and so I think that's like it was very strategically done and so that's my favorite about it. And what do you think? What do you think? Um, me having known the creator um, uh, personally, the, my uh, favorite part of it was the success of the movie after seeing the hard work that was put in by um, uh, Morris Musha Williams and uh, Joshua Yahusha Cullens yes. uh, because when you see such the groundwork um, done and when you see the sweat equity that's put into the film, and when you see how it's received, that was the most fulfilling part of the film. Um, it's, the, it's the greatest documentary ever made, um, not just for our people, but in the history of all documentaries, when you look at the weight of it. Wow. So the, the impact of um, seeing the results of it was um, the biggest thing for me. I'm so glad you brought that up. I have a question, actually. So what was it like for you being behind the scenes and knowing yeah. that this movie was coming out and then actually watching it? Did it come out and play out exactly how you were expecting? Great question. Did it blow your mind? Were there things that you didn't know and weren't expecting to see that you did see? How was that for you both? <laughs> for me, uh, seeing the fruits of um, what came from the movie was amazing because... Um, so you've seen uh, other documentaries, but other documentaries are uh, maybe like analytical or they don't keep you engaged. It's a bunch of statistics. And after about 30 minutes, you just want to get a napkin for the drool that's coming off your mouth from going to sleep. But uh, this documentary is all things encompassed in one um, that makes it um, um, uh, effective. It's efficient, um, it's engaging, it's informative, uh, but also it's relatable. Um, a lot of times people will make these complex films and the viewer cannot relate to them. Right. Um, but the most impactful thing about the film was I could watch it and say, hey, that's regarding me. Right, right, absolutely. Um, just being like seeing the behind the scene works and then when it actually comes out, like the amount of people that it reached. And so like, um, cause there was, I had heard of like um, one of the brothers' um, mother went into a uh, beauty salon and they were playing Reclaiming the Throne. And so, you know what I'm saying? So, like, the, the, the reach that it, it's been able to get to, which was the intention and the focus, is not just to reach people, but to awaken them, to, to give them the truth yes. and the understanding of who they are and where they come from. And so when you think of beauty salons and when you think of, like, uh, barbershops, right. like, what better way to reach our community? So This is incredible. so powerful. Well... Let me just ask you guys this. How has reclaiming the throne changed y'all lives personally, Ooh, your family, question. friends' life, anything like that? Can you guys share a little bit? Uh, all right. 
So for myself, um, so the interesting thing about reclaiming the throne is, so you can go and you can try to speak this information to somebody one on one. They could have known you your whole life, seen you as credible, but they won't receive anything you're saying. You give them that documentary though. You give them that documentary, and then it's a witness um, for um, their awakening. Because um, a lot of times they won't receive your words, but they'll receive it if it's on film. That is true. Right. That is so, um, Sha. Um, for me, really, it's just the ability for it to be broken down for me, myself, in a way to where I can give it to my daughter. And so even, like, for her to be at this event, to, like, see us dressed up, to see us when wow. we were, you know, the, the music was so going in the worship, like, seeing all of it come together, like, the more and more that she gets to see this, the more and more that I'm like, okay, she's going to multiply, duplicate, yeah, like, she's going to know this is her, and that's going to be her standard, so. That is so beautiful. Oh Hallelujah. Oh Thank y'all so much for sharing with us.
Welcome, we're back here at EX News. I'm Shalem. I'm Zion, and it's so nice to have you again with us. Shalom. And today we have two special guests, Mora Shara and Mora Yosef. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome, How are you guys welcome. doing? Doing great. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure to see you all. Thank you so much for coming to Reclaiming the Throne Reload. How are y'all feeling? What's the experience y'all are getting right now? Well, it's definitely a lot of excitement, a lot of going, uh, everything going on. It's from the vendors, with the marketplace, to the music. Everything has been absolutely phenomenal. D28 Productions has really put together an amazing event. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And something else I was thinking is, first of all, congratulations. congratulations. I see you all are expecting. Congrats, congrats. How has Reclaiming the Throne impacted you and y'all beautiful, beautiful, amazing family? Yeah, well, so the great thing about it is that our kids can grow up with the right history. They can grow up knowing um, their actual heritage and um, yes. not have to be indoctrinated by yes. the education system and the, the different um, uh, medias that, that yes. try to tell us the narrative of where we came from and especially just starting our history with slavery. And um, we know that uh, so our history is, is a lot richer and deeper than that and our kids are getting that from you know their birth on up to where amazing. they can speak this stuff for themselves confidently that's so amazing wow, that's a great mm -hmm. that's a great point being that we're here for a reload meeting we are in this amazing theater everybody's in their seats watching the movie now what would a second viewing look like for you if you had another opportunity like we do today to watch it what would you focus on well I think for me um the focus is really the uh, the 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 little subtle things that you might miss on the first view because it's so much information that right. comes out. It's hard to to Absolutely. soak it all in. There's a lot of impactful things that come out that catch your mind, Definitely. you know, in the first viewing. But when you really sit and and reflect, like for example, because um, you know I've, I've watched the documentary so many times. I know one yeah. of the things. Like you learn about the um, the transatlantic slave trade, the, how they specifically targeted specific groups, right. you know, and, and you look right. at the the historical documents, all that stuff. Each time you watch it, you're gonna it's gonna illuminate a different detail that really is it could deserve its own documentary right. in itself. Right, Morshra, is there something specific you would focus on second time around? I think the second time around, I would really focus on the different terminology, the different Ooh. definitions. I think that could be very impactful, even from like a homeschool perspective. When we're talking about you know teaching our children because and, um, the producers really put a a lot of information in there, but there's a lot of terminology and the breakdowns of that information from the Hebrew language to to how information or languages may have changed or words may have changed. So I would really focus on the different terminology. That is so true. I'm so glad that you brought that up because as a homeschooler, how does this series change the way you educate your children? Mm. The great thing about homeschooling is, like um, Yosef said, you don't have to worry about the indoctrination yes. that the school system gives. We don't have to worry about how textbooks are, are written and it whitewashes or takes out completely our history. So the great thing about this is we can really bring in our history. And one thing I love about Reclaiming the Throne is it not only brings in the history and the culture, it brings in the music. Mm -hmm. So it's very That's engaging really for the children. Yes. It's another way for them to really learn. It brings in the imagery, and the imagery is amazing. And yes. it's not just a documentary that's educational. It's really is very entertaining it and is. so that's a very impactful thing for homeschooling that is so true can i say something to that real quick because of course you know, um you remember in school where they would wheel in the the, the tv projectors and the yeah. projector and you're watching like some boring film about whatever imagine you watch something that is about you and your people it's engaging it's exciting you can uh, enjoy the music, enjoy the graphics and all that stuff. So I think for the homeschooling experience, it really like uh, makes it personal. It's it's very different from what we experience in school, watching yes. like these like uh, black and white films right. of pilgrims, Definitely. you know, coming on all this stuff that we know is nonsense. Definitely. Really now, but now our kids can really be uh, built up with something that they can identify with. That is so awesome. real. So just, just to land back on, on that, I just have one more question for you guys. 
Speaking on engaging and impacting the youth, what is one part of reclaiming the throne, whether it's a quote, you know, a part of the series as a whole that actually stood out to you all the most? I, like I said, I would really say the music, the music with the graphics and the imagery, that really stand out to me the most. Um, I love the song with um, uh, Moray Mo with yes. the um, marching design. That yes. is really one of the songs that gets you up, gets you yes. going, no matter how old or how young you are. And so I think, like I said, that the music aspect and bringing in the education Absolutely. musically is really the, one of the best parts. What about you, Maura Yosa? So um, I think the strategy of the movie is one of the things that um, I appreciated about it yes. to where it starts off asking these very specific questions mm. that are common to the black experience That's true. and then even going down these uh, rabbit holes where you look at some of the con uh, the consistencies with the way um, black women behave and where they dress and all these things true, and then yes. you even see this uh, the the aspect of this connection to Egypt and really dealing with um, the 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 psychology of it you know, so um, I see how the, the producers of it, um, Maury Josh and Maury Mo, how they were strategic in the things that they addressed Absolutely. as a person who's like coming into this history themselves. It, it really uh, holds your hand as you walk through it. That was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you so all much. so much. Thank we you, are thank you, thank you. grateful. You Honors unto you guys. So great. Thank you so much for being a part of EX News and D28 Productions. Shalom, shalom. We are back with our next guest, and I am so excited for these next two We're beautiful excited. women. Beautiful. Beautiful. Women. Beautiful <laughs> women. Hallelujah. You are so awesome. Welcome, welcome. Beautiful. You look welcome. beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. amazing. Stunning, stunning. Ancient Kodash. Thank you. <laughs> so royal, so royal. Thank you, thank you. So how are you all feeling today at the premiere live? Listen, this is so excellent. Yes, excellent. I am beyond just blessed and excited. You all, look at us. We are beautiful. It's beautiful. Look at the joy. Look at the confidence. These are the things that were taken from us. Yeah. And so just to see that this is being reclaimed as well, be, having that that spirit to say, you know what, I am strong mm -hmm. with the way that Yahushua made me. And to know who you are in your history, that's one of the things that can weaken you when you don't know your roots, you know. And so just to see everyone reclaiming their throne, reclaiming their history, this has been amazing. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And how are you feeling, Maura? I'm, I'm super excited, actually, because all of it is history. You know, it's like we rewriting it getting back to who we are mm, you great. know that that says a lot about us what we didn't know now we can watch the movie and we can see who we really are and whom we belong you know that says a lot you Absolutely. know because a lot of times we don't know who we are yes. but this is telling us so we don't have to question that anymore yes. so i'm super excited about history being rewritten hallelujah, hallelujah. getting back to excellence Getting back to excellence, reclaiming our history, reclaiming the throne. And even with that being said, how important is it for our people to watch Reclaiming the Throne? Let's talk about it. You know, um, I want to give you all a, a story. I was shopping uh, I was shopping at a store, and my daughter, we, they had a picture of Cesar Borgia, right? And, and, and for those who think that you would know him as Jesus Christ. <laughs> but listen, I, my daughter is five years old. Well, she was five years old at that time. And I told her, I said, who is that? She was like, I don't know. Wow. wow. Oh, my gosh. That's how important this movie is. Wow. To know that my child Hallelujah. does not ever have to identify with that. Hallelujah. When she reads the scripture, when she's thinking about the scripture, she's seeing herself. Yes. She's yes. not having to do the work that I've had to do to un train my brain to see yes. European faces. She's not having to fight through all of the indoctrination indoctrination of those who whitewashed our history. Absolutely. And that's the power. One generation does not have to be touched with that um, deception. Yes. And 
I can't tell you how elated I was to see, so man, excited. just imagine what this is going to look like in 20 years to see a generation untouched. Mm. Because, listen, the Bible validates history. Right. It's the Bible that validates science. Mm. So I'm so thankful that my children have that opportunity to be untouched yes, by the untouched. deception of this world. That's how powerful and how necessary this movie is. Yes. It's more than just a movie. It's a docu documentary, but it's also a teaching tool that has to be at all the homeschool. It has to be Absolutely. everywhere. It has to be, I'm glad it's on Tubi. So if you haven't seen it, you better go see it. Go check it out. Don't fight it. To buy into that truth and sell it not. Yes. Last question, if I can ask you all. If you could speak to someone that has just watched this documentary series for the first time and is wondering where to go from here, what do I do now? I just found all of this out. Where do I go? What would you tell them? Listen, go on. If you, if you need to start at Google, D28 Productions, just put it in. It's going to come D28 up on Instagram. It's going to come up on TikTok. It's gonna, the website's going to come up. But if you ask, you better go. D28 Productions. D28 Productions. Deep28 Productions.com. That's great. Yes. Any advice that you would give for first time viewers or people just waking up to the knowledge of who the who they are according to the Bible? I think what I would say is don't get overwhelmed. Because sometimes when we especially with when I woke up, I got overwhelmed. So I say don't get overwhelmed. You know, if you're gonna accept it, accept it. And then go slow, walk slow in heavy traffic. You know, and just knowledge is key, but not all knowledge is key, mm. but the right knowledge is key. Wow. So just walk slow in heavy traffic and don't get overwhelmed. That's such wonderful advice. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure and an honor to get y'all insight, advice, and wisdom. Yes. Thank you so, so much. Again, y'all heard it first. Look up D28 Productions and Reclaiming the Throne. Come on, D28! Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, here come the energy. Say here come the energy. Here come the energy. So, yes, we got Nalu. We got Yosef. Check, check, check. A quick edit. They forgot about your song. And your song. And your song. Hey, you hey, 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 hey. What I want to do, hey. What more is it for? Where you praying on? People pouring me the praying on? Hey, so how you go again? Reclaiming the throne. We claim the throne. I like that. Let's hit that again. Let's see about the throne. Reclaiming the throne, we claim the throne. We claim the throne, we claim the throne. We claim the throne, we claim the throne. We claim the throne, we claim the throne. Hey, so when we reclaim the throne, uh -huh. what we gonna do? Make a bow to the knee of Yahusha. Make a bow to the knee of Yahusha. Let's hit it with a quick bow.
Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. We are here at the D28 premiere of Reclaiming the Throne. Hallelujah. I'm with my lovely co-host. Alicia Bonavavad. All right, and I'm your boy. Moray Takoa Hallelujah. We down here in Columbia, South Carolina, reclaiming the throne. Reclaiming the throne. Yes, sir. We yes, are sir. Awakening the true children of Israel to who they are. Um, so this is great. This is an amazing event. Absolutely. If you are not down here, you are missing something spectacular. Absolutely. But I tell you what, we want to first give a shout out to D28 Productions. Absolutely. D28 can be found on all social media platforms. Uh Facebook. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram. I think we're on TikTok. TikTok. Um, it's in various forms. D28. I think it says D28 some places and D28 Productions. But if you look for this logo, you'll find us, whether on any platform. That's right. So you want to make sure you're following. Go in, like, comment, yeah. share. You want to make sure you subscribe to the channel as well that's on YouTube. Because you don't want to miss some pertinent and important information. You want to make sure you be one of the first to hear, Hallelujah. the first to see. The first to comment, the first to like, the first to Hallelujah. share, because Hallelujah. this is a major movement Hallelujah. that is really beneficial to the times we are living in. Hallelujah. So tell us what you're wearing. Uh, well, you know, uh, to be honest, what I originally <laughs> ordered, uh -huh. they sent me a message on Thursday saying it won't be here till Tuesday. So, you know, it's, it's been something that has been delayed but not denied. Yes. So what I have is something that was picked out. But my wife, you know, she said I look good, so that means Hallelujah, we Hallelujah. Well, likewise, uh, just Etsy. You know, Etsy. I, I ordered this from Etsy. Had to do some brush shipping, All right. but nevertheless, oh, it so arrived intact. No, 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 you no, no. no. It was Yahuwah. It's Yahuwah. Hallelujah. He sent it to me on time. On time. Hallelujah. 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 So let's. Uh, are we going to get ready to interview uh, Queen Mother of the Nation, yes. Angela Phillips? Come on in, Mother. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. So how are you today? I am blessed. You enjoying this event? I'm having a wonderful day. Oh, man. I, I think um, it's just beautiful people out here. We're looking yes. joyful out here. Yes. Just having a phenomenal time. It's lovely to see the people in their attire. Yes. It's beautiful. It's like walking through what I imagine a home is going to feel like. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about your input in, as far as the movie is concerned. Praise Yahuwah. I had the opportunity. Um, I was asked by um, Joshua Cullens, also known as Yahusha. Yes. I was asked by him to, to speak on Hebrew women. Yes. How we can identify uh, what we would call African-American women yes, as Hebrew women, how we can identify them through biblical um, scripture. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about... Um, the adornment that the yes. women wore yes. and when you talk about the adornment when you talk about the way they walked mm -hmm. when you talk about the things that Yahuwah specifically said to yes. them yes. in judgment you know without a doubt that it's us yes. no one walks like a black woman yes, That's right. That's and right. no one dresses up yeah. like a black woman the adornment and the braiding of the hair that yes. he warned us you know we got kind of prideful about yes. um, these are things that are markers that identify us in yes, scripture so he asked me to, to speak a little bit about that, to speak a little bit about the cultural norms for women okay, okay. in um, scripture that uh, we can identify with, how what our markers were for a woman's time of the month, um, what our markers were for childbirth, and and um, just being a woman in the culture. Mm -hmm. So I have a, it's kind of a personal question. Is that necklace, is that something similar to something we would have worn back it in the day? It is, it is. Um, the scripture talks about the, the, the round tire like mm -hmm. adornment that the okay. women would wear around their neck. And we can see this on the continent. Okay. We know that there are certain tribes where they wear the um the the, the bracelets or the not the bracelets but the necklaces that wrap around the neck going upward. Okay. And so um in the scripture they are referred to as I believe it's the uh, my mind is slipping. Co co the koal, the co the call. C A U L the okay. call. Hallelujah. 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 My question is for one, a lot of people don't know this wonderful woman here. One of the greatest female rappers I've ever heard. All right. <laughs> Trying to get on the album, but we won't go there. <laughs> but mother, I just want you to explain how how does it feel just to be a part of this time? You know, this could have happened we feel like at any time, but right now, this time. That's a 
great question. That's a great question. Um, it's funny because myself and a few um, older sisters have had this conversation. Yes. And we talk about, wow, what if we had known this when we were in our 20s and we were at 30s? I'm 60. Yes. And, you know, what if we had known this then? Well, honestly, if we had known this then, it probably wouldn't have been the best time mm -hmm. to be in the knowledge of this information. This is the appointed time. Yes. And so being an elder in the midst of this awakening, in the midst of what Yahuwah is doing amongst his people, is an honor and a blessing and a privilege because there aren't many elders in this awakening. It's for older people, change is hard. And many of us came up in Christianity in the church. And so it's very hard for us to understand that the way we were taught scripture was incorrect. Yes. And so to be able to make that change mentally, to be able to hear the scripture from a perspective that's based in culture and identifying yourself in yes. the culture, it's a, I can't describe what that feels like. I can't describe what that feels like. I waited my whole life always knowing something wasn't quite right about what I was being taught and how I was being taught. But this, when I came into this understanding, I knew this was real, this was the truth, this was what Yahuwah had been wanting for us. I remember being in prayer one day and saying, Father, at the time I was saying, God, mm -hmm. why are you so angry mm -hmm. with black people? Are you angry with us? Why are we so hated everywhere? Why does no one acknowledge us as, as human beings? Like, why is there no humanity towards us? And it wasn't 30 days later that he began to show me the scriptures in Deuteronomy. And he began to speak to me about how we were his chosen people but had lost our way. And then I found... Um, um, Josh Cullens and Morris Williams, um, respectfully, I, I speak, you know, very respectfully and reverently of them, um, because they were here teaching what Yahuwah showed me in the scripture. And so, it's, I, I could go on and on, but I won't. It's amazing. It's a privilege. Yes. It's an honor for, for me at my age to come into this understanding and to see all of these young people yes. moving and working yes. towards the returning of, of his people yes. to him. Yes. It's, I don't know any other way to it's describe it, but to say I'm so humbled and honored by it. I'm so honored that Yahuwah allowed me to see this. Yes. And I just pray that he allowed me to see us coming home, to see Hallelujah. us in our homeland. But if he doesn't, hallelujah, he hallelujah. let me see this. Hallelujah. So I got one more question for your mother. If there was something that you could tell young women or young men, what would it be based on the summarization of the movie? You are not the sum total of this experience. There is more for you. You are more. You have a creator who knows you by name and has a plan for you if you will respond. Hallelujah. Well, thank Hallelujah. you, Mother. Thank Father. you, Mother. Joining Isn't she beautiful, sure. everybody? She's so beautiful. Hallelujah. Josh, thank you, Jamaica. guys. Thank you, guys, for joining us. Yes, yes. <laughs> the creators, uh, filmer, producer, yes. director, writer, Extraordinary yes. rapper himself, <laughs> Joshua Cullins, Jermaine Cullins, welcome. Uh, D28 Productions, we are so honored to interview you guys. Yes. So first off, just a little background on what made you even think of the mindset of yes. to put out a movie? You know, when everything that's showing is, man, you have to make millions of dollars. You have to have somebody major backing you to be able to do these things. What is it that, that sprung you forward with saying this is possible? Well, you all things are possible. Hallelujah. Right? Um, I don't have no doubt about anything that Yahuwah says or declares. Um, so in my mind, but now he wants me to do it. If he wants me to do it, it's going to be done. Um, so I think when that happened and he started giving me the blueprint, it's about just putting things together and making it happen. And then, you know, when you have uh, Morris Williams with you, yes. anything is possible. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. So um, we got it done. Praise Hallelujah. 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 So, uh, Jamay, um, what was it like supporting um, Maury's vision as far as producing the movie? Were there any things that you had to contribute? Um, babies. 
<laughs> Babies it is, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. So uh, I think we've had two children so far, and we're on our third, well, this is our fifth child, but our third while working on this production and movie. So that's my project that I get is Hallelujah. babies. So, so how does the movie, uh, um, how would it affect your children? Like what would you point them to? What direction, what, is there a specific part in the movie that you would point them to? No, they're kind of self-led. They, okay. they absolutely love the movie and they'll ask to put it on or they'll just put it on themselves. Okay. Okay. And they'll go, uh, their ages range from 12 to two. Okay. And they love watching the movie. Hallelujah. So 12, eight, four, two, two years old, they all love the movie. And yes. it's very engaging even for young children. So our two-year-old will sit down and watch, partly because he sees his dad, but also <laughs> because it's so engaging um, with the music, the graphics, the animation. Um, they really love it. So it, it's, it's not for any one specific age group or demographic. Okay. Okay. It's for literally everybody. Very nice. Awesome, awesome. So another question. I've watched the movie, and it has thoroughly confirmed things that I've already read, I've heard, but something about pictures, and I don't know if you think the same way, but seeing something brings a little bit more of a conviction, brings a more of a belonging. It's just like when we play sports, right? right? So it's like, we want to be like Mike, but we got to watch Mike. Once we watch Mike, we believe we can go and fly. Exactly. Yes. We can do the moves like we'll Mike. We've seen the song right. and everything. Exactly. Right. So was this something shaped even, because you see it even in your upbringing. Right. How your upbringing had a part of this movie. So um, media is the most powerful weapon in the world. Correct. Um, at every level. I mean, even in war, the first level of war is propaganda. Um, and it's through media, you know. Yes. So, and like you said, it, it's a thing they call natural progression. Where um, a child, depending on his environment, the images that he sees, he eventually he or she eventually becomes based on that environment. So that's the reason why it's in, it's it's paramount that we have um, in some type of media, some kind of content that represents us, that they can actually see us in these roles. Yes. That's the reason why there was so much money spent, and there was so much time yes. in these huge productions to try to show and present a certain narrative. Um, and so this another reason why with D28, this reason why people might be listening or whatever, but really need your help because we need to expand on this. We need to have um, greater productions. Yes. We need um, productions that can rival. We need uh, we need live action biblical productions yes. showing us in the proper roles, historically Correct. biblical proper roles. And if we can do that, we'll start to change the minds. I mean, most we in the TikTok generation. Yes. Most people, they're going to see something for a couple seconds, and that's going to be their reality. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we have to. It's, it's, it's paramount. And, and a lot of that came as far as the inspiration of that. Um, for whatever reason, you were putting that in me as a child, um, um, anything concerning art, everything with art, music, visual, yes. um, everything. Uh, I was an artist as a child before I did anything else. So, um, so I think that that's the thing that spoke to me. And then through film, me and my wife watch a lot of film. Um, we always have been these film critics. We actually was, at one point in time, we was going to start our own podcast. Yes. Doing, doing film reviews. Yes. But we didn't get around to it. But the gist of it is, um, you who are, it's just something, everybody has that something in them. Just like with you. See, y'all might not know this now. <laughs> this man right here. It's not about me. Is one of the baddest lyricists yes. on the planet. I ain't talking and about in, MCs. I ain't talking about yes. in, I'm talking about whatever genre you're talking about. Any genre. Put him against this man, freestyle, um, or lyrical, straight um, through a song, you name it, he's there. So, but that's something that was put into you from a child. Something that was um, that eventually had to be birthed forth, and that's just how everybody are. At some, at an appointed time, that thing has to sprout up because a seed is planted. Man, that's awesome. I'm just gonna say this, and we're gonna let y'all go. Y'all, <laughs> it's crazy. Y'all had ambitions of having a podcast about being movie critics. <laughs> Y'all yeah. bypassed that and yeah, made a right, movie. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know what? We don't like this. Let's do our own. Yeah. But that's major what you said about changing the narrative. Right. You know, because really it seems like the ones with the money have always controlled the narrative. Right. Right. Yes. They've always spun something. Because if I can show you something in a magnitude where it feels right. like the ones that are chosen right. can only do. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Right. right. Then you'll get to thinking, hey, I'm not that special myself. Right. Exactly. But what you're doing is a heavy task, man. We're going to continue to be praying for y'all. Yes. We appreciate you guys. Y'all have a blessed one. Yes. Thank you. We Baruch y'all. Hallelujah. And thank y'all for creating thank this you. film. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. There you have it. Joshua and Jermaine Cullens. Wonderful pillars, wonderful people that are co-creators of this movie called Reclaiming the Throne. Uh, this is the first part, but this won't be the last. Right. There's two more parts, and you can go to Tubi. It's free to watch on Tubi. If I'm not mistaken, it's out on Amazon as well. Um, I think those are the only two platforms Also now. Vimeo. Vimeo. Vimeo as well. Okay. But it's free on Tubi. It's out on Amazon and Vimeo. So there's several opportunities for you to go out and check it out. Um, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Family, we're getting ready to interview Mr. Benaya Israel. Oh, yes. Um, he's a part of the Reclaiming the Throne documentary. I mean, a great historian. Yes. Man, I'm talking about research, providing concrete evidence in terms of who we are as people, where we came from, just all kind of information. So let's bring him in and see what we can um, get from him today. Hallelujah. 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 All right, shalom, shalom. Nice to have you. Thank you for coming and joining us today. You enjoying everything? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, beautiful awesome. people out here just having a great time. Yeah, it's always good to, to, to be around family in Mishpaka. Hallelujah. You know, hallelujah. It's a great um, historic event. Yes, yes. Because when it comes to this, this information, it's, it's, it's something that we take for granted. Yes. You know, that we try to share with family and friends. Right. And, you know, this movie is it. This, this movie right. is just one of those ways we can share that. Right. So tell us how, how did research, was it something that you've always done? Um, is it something that you just picked up along the way? How did that start? Well, I mean, actually one of the, the brothers was just asked me that uh, not too long ago. It's like, how did you get started? <laughs> And really, it, uh, uh, it goes to my dad. Okay. So my, my dad was just asking me to research our family history. Okay. And, you know, we knew our family went back to Alabama. And so I was able okay. to track it back to Alabama. And okay. I assumed that we were slaves in Alabama. You know, mm -hmm. I, I saw our name show up in, uh, on the slave manifest. Mm -hmm. But just like most uh, so-called African Americans, you know, I ran, to, ran into a dead end. Okay. okay. And so I started to try, see if I could get back a little bit further. And I started asking questions like, well, what were we doing before uh, 1619? What were we doing before the transatlantic slave trade? And that's when right. all this information started to right. come up as far as like, you know, Spain and Portugal and um, all the, the rich history that you'll find in this in this uh, documentary. Right, right. Hallelujah. Man, you know, I got to ask you, man. You know, we go back a little bit. <laughs> but, man, you've always been a scholar. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always intrigued and captivated by the, the research that you did, um, by your diligence, you know, the stewardship that you have demonstrated over what you are given. So, how does that feel, man? I mean, your years of people saying you're crazy. Mm. Mm. Uh, you done, you done ran off or you done been bamboozled and hoodwinked. Mm. So how does it make you feel to see that now what you've been studying and, and praying about and fasting about, now seeing it in picture form? And you being a major part of that, how does that feel? Well, I know the, the very first time that I saw it, you know, it's, and to, your, to your point, you don't realize the emotional part of it until you see it. You know, and, and of course, it's like, when I, when I, when I first, first saw it, the first thing that, that, the first phrase that popped in my mind was, was that he did it. And what I mean that he did it, you know, uh, Chief uh, Yahusha and uh, Chief Moshe, like they, they did it. They captured the essence of, of the message yes. and packaged yes. it into, a, into a, a format that was easily digestible. Yes. Yes. And, and one of the things that I, that I struggled with, at least you know, in my endeavors to try to put something out there, was, was how to present it to, to the people. Mm -hmm. But that's not my expertise. Like my expertise is in videography, but it is Chiefs. Yes. You know? And so when, when it's just something that when you see a, a true artist Take your, take your, take you know, take work. It's not my, my work. It's you know Israel's work. Take this, take work, and and put it into something that's that's easily easily digestible. It's mm -hmm. entertaining. You know, one of the one of yes. the most uh, challenging aspects of this type of documentary is it has to deal with the, the volume, the sheer volume of information. Mm -hmm. Because you know when you yes. you're reading quote after quote after quote after quote, you know people can start to yeah. <laughs> right, start right. that the hand can start to stop the nod. Right. But in this case, you know, he, he did it. 
you know, he was able to present it so that it was, it was, it was balanced, you know, it had the information, it was entertaining. And, you know, it, I, I, I re literally teared up. I literally teared up. I was in the back of the room. Nobody saw me. I, I teared up. So I got a quick question. So how does the information that you've researched compare to what's being taught in schools? Oh, that's a good question. Because it's literally, it's not taught in schools. Mm -hmm. But the information is in school. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is, is that when you know, our, our formula is simple, you know, and that is just take the old books, the books that were published before, you know, in the 1800s. I used to say just in the 1800s as, in general. Mm -hmm. But now I'm a little bit more specific. I say from the 1850s and older. Okay. But take those old books about the, you know, Spain and Portugal, uh, you know, Africa, but for the most part, Spain and Portugal. When you look at those books, you start to see a consistent pattern form, you know. And, and you, were, you were asking me about, it, you know, how is that different than what's in schools? Well, those books, those books that were published in the 1850s, they're in schools because when you look it up on the line and you try to get you a copy, it'll point you to a university. It'll point you to a seminary school. Okay. That's right. And, you know, and to your point, I'm wondering, it's like, well, if these books are there, how come we're not right. getting this history? Because right, right. I took African history uh -huh. in college. Right. But this wasn't in there. Mm -hmm. But the book was in the library. Wow. So, you know, that, that, so it just goes to show you, if you want to know your own history, you have to do your own, your own research. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, this has been an awesome interview, man. I'm proud of you. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Yes. And man, it's amazing work that you're doing. Pretty if you cool. can, before you go, tell them, awesome channel. If you haven't been subscribed to his YouTube, you can give them the name of the YouTube as well. Uh, Hidden Hebrews or Benaya Israel is the channel, but Hidden Hebrews is a series. Hallelujah. Benaya Israel is the channel. Hidden Hebrews is the name of it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And man, thank you, man. Thank you. Hallelujah, thank you. man. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Testing? Yeah, that's good. My name is Paul McKenzie. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I'm kind of full, so I'm not going to take a lot of time. Let me say, first of all, it's excellent. Just pure D, excellent, period. It's time for us as a group to bust up all of this Christianity that we've had and we've lived with for the last 350, 380 years. What I saw today was like the beginning, like a jackhammer, and it, and it put a crack, and, it, and I can see the crack kind of moving into people's spirits, and I think that's y'all kind of speaking to me. You know, it, it, it's, I can kind of foresee, as, as, as you guys keep doing what you're doing, that, there's, that th this crowd, these people, their children, we're all going to see something different in the next five, ten years, and that's what I've been looking for all my life, just something different. I didn't know who God was until my nephew here exposed Yah to me. I always thought he was Jesus and he was white and, you know, and he had mercy on us and we were slaves and da-da-da-da-da. And after this experience, you know, again, I'm full because I'm beginning to see, yeah, these kids won't grow up the way that I did. And because they won't grow up the way that I did, we're going to be the people that y'all intended us to be. Thank you. Sorry, I'm nervous. Um, we're from South Florida, uh, Hollywood. Um, hi. <laughs> um, we've been listening to Rebirth since 2017. My name's Tonya, and um, we played the movie, and Gentiles will come in and go, why do you keep playing this same movie over and over again? Like, it's like every week that I come in here, it's like the same movie. And I was like, I want our people to learn their history. And there was, there's a few people that used to come in and they saw the movie and they was just like, yes, what is this? What is it? It was more than, more than 50 people because it's a black restaurant. Um, 
it's called dairies. <laughs> but it, it, when our people came in and they saw the movie, because it wasn't like, um, you wasn't telling them what to do. You wasn't telling them to be Hebrews. You wasn't telling them that. They was actually sitting there and listening to it. And then they was like, yeah, what is this? What is this? And I had so many people do that. And I was just so happy to know that we as people can get together because it's, it's, it's really ugly out there. And when you see our, when I see my daughters, my daughters, they come in, they're half dressed, they smell of weed, like it's really, really, really bad. But I even had that problem, so I'm not judging them, you know what I mean? But it's like just to try and talk to them and have that conversation with them. You never know who you can touch. And that's what Yahushua was showing me, that um, we must be kind to one another, right? Even when you feel like, I was asking him, like, why you brought me back here? I don't want to be back here, you know what I mean? But when he brought me back here and I'm, people go to me, you know, your spirit is just so nice. I didn't realize that because I'm like, I'm not trying to tell people I'm a Hebrew, but people will come up to me and say, there's something different about you. You're so nice. Like, how come you don't budge? And I have witches. I mean, witches that work with me. Um, they have the eye on their chest and they was trying to sabotage me. They do all kinds of stuff. And I still killed them with kindness. Right. And they and then they come up to me and they say, well, what? Where does your peace come from? And I go, <laughs> I said, you don't even understand. I said, you're trying to get your power from the extension cord instead of from the actual battery itself. So <laughs> my peace comes from Yahusha. And they don't understand because they keep asking that same question, but they're still trying to sabotage me. So I just want to say, like, I know I can go on, but today was something that I really wanted to experience. And it was such a beautiful experience. Like the concert, I was telling most of the people that I know that I see, like um, nothing but afar. Um, I remember watching her pray. The first time I saw her pray on YouTube, I told my daughter, I was like, listen to this lady pray. And to see her grow into who she is right now, it's a blessing. Um, everybody, I know you guys don't know me, but I feel like I know you guys. <laughs> um, I just love you all, and I'm just so proud of our people. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Shalom. Double honors to the leaders. Um, I'm just grateful for you guys opening, up, opening the doors and giving us this opportunity um, to fellowship with you guys. The hospitality is really, really off the charts. Um, this is my wife, and we're from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, every time you guys open the door, we're going to be here. Um, you guys have made up the words and the stories in the, the book just jump off the pages for me that I'm going around telling everyone we're reading it wrong. Um, I thank you guys. I appreciate you. Shalom. I just wanted to tell you guys that the work that you're doing is amazing. I'm blown away by what I'm learning. I'm blown away by what I've seen today. All these beautiful kings and queens. It's nothing like it. And I've, I've had a wonderful experience being here today. Thank you. Told out to everybody that had us. Told out to all the work that you put in. I loved it. Chief Moshe, keep on praising. It's contagious. It's very contagious. And I enjoy it myself. Thank you for having us. Infinite honors to you and your families. I am Kim. I am from, well, I live in Crofton, Kentucky. Oh, wow. uh, I just wanted to say that as soon as I walked in, and I feel the Ruach HaKadosh right now. As soon as I walked in, I felt the Ruach HaKadosh. And as I began to hug each and every one of you, I just felt the release. Wow. 
and I felt like it was a place of refuge, a place of safety. So, Toda. Shalom, shalom. Uh, I am uh, Aaron, coming with my daughter, my youngest daughter. Uh, we're from Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, uh, we are. So I've actually seen the movie a few times and been trying to push it on my family. Yeah, getting a lot of resistance, but uh, got my daughter here to finally watch the first episode. She's ready. She's ready. Um, with that said, I would like to say uh, thank you. Uh, this is my second time seeing you guys in person. Um, and, you know, I expressed thankful, thankfulness before, and I just want to continue to do that. Uh, I express thankfulness for everything that you guys teach us, and um, even, even online, uh, that, that allows us to be a little more introspective and grow uh, to where Yahuwah need, Yahuwah and Yahuwah should need us to be. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I thank you. I thank you. It's my auntie, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> auntie Mary. Hey, y'all, she raised me. She beat me. She changed my life when she fed me. It's an honor for her to be here. <laughs> hold on, fuck. I'm his auntie. Yes, I helped raise him and I whipped him, changed his diapers and everything. But um, I've enjoyed myself so much and things that I didn't know. I learned a lot today. And this is my first time coming to one of the meetings. And I'm hoping and praying it won't be the last. And I had a good, good time. Thank you all. Hi, Shalom. I'm Akaya. I'm here with my husband. We're from Detroit, Michigan. We made it our <laughs> yeah. We made it our business to come down here, okay? When we heard about the event, I told my husband, I said, babe, I wanna go. Or can we go? And he like, Yeah, we can go. So we came down here, but to um explain how we feel about the event. Um it's one thing to see it on YouTube, but it's another thing in person. But I told my husband, I said, I really feel like when we was walking, waiting in line to get in, I told my husband, I said, I really feel like what we see on YouTube is what we're going to get in person. Like, I don't think it's going to be a consistency problem, you know, um, and that's exactly what we got. Like, so to praise and to just be in the atmosphere with y'all. Um, that's just like the sister just said, like, uh, we see y'all, I'm telling my husband, like, yep, that's, th that's his wife, and that, that, that's them, yep. <laughs> like, y'all don't know who I am, but I know who y'all is from afar, so um, I'm just so thankful to be here, and just to let y'all know, we just got off the road 12 hours coming in at 4 in the morning, so we made it our business to get here, okay, so, you know, we just, you know. Thankful and, you know, all praises to the Most High for him allowing this opportunity to come forth for us to, you know, lay eyes on y'all and just see. Because y'all, I love the, the praise and the worship. Something that my husband always say when we see y'all worship and worship is that it remind him of or an idea of how it was in ancient times. You know, like, you know, just the vibes is just so... Oh, uh, y'all know at this point, but um, it's just, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm just, again, so happy to be here, and we just say thank y'all so much for the work that y'all have done, and, you know, putting it out here for our people, because, you know, it's a lot of times where all of us, it be one or two of us in our family that be in the truth, but we be trying to, you know, nudge on our family, like little brother, little sister, little cousin, it's like, okay, I'm trying to show you something different than what I had at your time, you know, trying to shine that light on you. And this is a this documentary is a great step in the door for that because then it's not just me saying it, you seeing other people saying the same thing that I'm saying and you know, you can do your own research and see it, you know, so it's just we just thankful, so that's all. But shalom. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, 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 oh,